Today I'm going to show you how to make modular tile sets for your 1 inch by 1 inch tabletop gaming. It will add a ton of 3D realism to your sets and there are other videos out there that show how to do this, but I'm hoping that you'll learn a thing or two about some pitfalls to avoid when making your own tile sets. So sit back and let's get started. I'm making these to match the same size of tiles that I already have, that way they line up perfectly flat and I can use them modularly. So what I'm doing is making them half an inch thick and then making them three by three inches in square. I'm checking to make sure that they kind of line up and then I'm gonna cut out a bunch of them. I cut out about 13 in total uh, for this because I'm planning on losing some. I'm gonna end up with about nine, but I'm doing that to kind of show some of the pitfalls that you can fall into when making this so that you don't expect, ah, I'm gonna make exactly as many as I cut out uh, because there's some things that you can do that will ruin your pieces and I'll show you as we go but I've got the half inch three by three blocks now and I'm going to cut out the rest of those so that they are perfectly square and ready to get started with so now that I have those blocks created it's time to make sure that they truly are a three inch by three inch square having a tiny bit off on that spells trouble for your modular system because if there's a corner that is at a slight angle off or just a little bit further than the other ones uh, it's gonna show up if you're making a room full of a nine by nine of these or something so we want to make sure that they're all flush and I take all of them back through hitting each side so that it matches up with my three inch setup. After we've got them all cut out and lined up, it's time to do some texturing. I'm gonna do some fast texturing with a Green Stuff Worlds brick roller. You can use these to add some brick texture, which is what I'm gonna do because I want mine to be a road. But I'm gonna show you how to do it without one of these. This just saves me a lot of time. But doing it without actually might show a little bit more detail. So if you have one of these, roll it right across the top of your foam and it will give it that nice kind of brick texture and since I want this to be a road I want it to look like a brick road and you can see just rolling it on gives it a incredibly nice quick brick texture so there's another way that you can do this if you want to do it by hand and that's basically take it and draw it in with a pencil just draw a bunch of random brick shapes and actually if you're looking for really having the bricks shine through I recommend doing this over the brick texture roller because not only will you have those, they'll soak up the washes a lot more and it'll look a lot deeper. Um, so you can see mine there, uh, it's nice, um, but if you do the hand one, it'll look really, really good when it's done and painted as well. The brick is more just a texture for me. The focal point is gonna be the coarse grass that I'm gonna put on the top. So I didn't need the bricks being the as detailed as they possibly could be, right? So I'm just gonna roll a bunch of these out and they'll work for the purposes that I'm going to do. But if you're making just bricks, I highly recommend that you take the time to do it by hand. Now for texturing the sides of the bricks, I'm gonna show you what you actually should do and then I'll show you what I did later. So what you should do is where the edge of every brick kind of hits the side of the wall, you should take your pencil and just pulled down and that will make the bricks look like they are the entire tile which is the better way to go you're gonna have problems if you use the roller purely in deforming the way that you do the 3x3 bricks that's what I did on my other one and I should have continued to do that but I didn't so I'm gonna show you what I did and that's just I crushed into the side of the 3x3 because I, I thought you know what I want brick textures going around all the sides but you can see there it already kind of deformed and rolled some of the sides so I had to go back a few times to make it look good it looks nice uh, and I was trying to do something kind of quick so that's what I was doing for this but that's what kind of ruined uh, four of the 13 because they were so deformed you couldn't get a straight line out of them and they wouldn't really work in a modular system so they would be okay as standalones but it, it's really hard to even get a grid on them so this is what I ended up doing I like it because the nine pieces I have still look good but it's not as good as I would have wanted I highly recommend doing the edge of the bricks so now we're gonna set up the one by one by one by one grid system on the top. It's pretty easy to do uh, and it fits your minis and your normal tabletop role-playing game setup. So all you do is set an inch wide off and just make marks up along the side of your foam. And that is pretty much it. It's a, it's a pretty simple process. Just go through there and do that on one side of all of your foams, the, the side that you textured, and then you've got your grid setup. So just push it on there, 
barely tap it with the hot wire cutter and you're good to go. You can also do this just by taking a deep, deep pencil cut or even a knife cut and you'll get the same results. After that, we're going to mix a black Mod Podge setup just like they do on Black Magic Crafts and this will kind of give the tiles some extra strength as well as give them a black base coat which is what we want because if it's too light uh, it's not going to look good. Um, the black is a easy way to go ahead and apply a base coat without having to worry about anything else so make sure you completely cover all of your tiles in the black magic craft style black paint with Mod Podge. Uh, it's, it's fantastic and I highly highly recommend it. If you haven't seen Black Magic Crafts 3x3 grid system, go check it out. It's very similar and he is phenomenal with his work. And you might even get a second idea from what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and mix up some dark, dark gray to paint over the top. Mix it up with a little bit of water so that it gets down into the recesses of the terrain and completely coat the thing. This is kind of our second level base coat. It, go it goes well with the black and kind of darkens itself even further, but we want to make sure we get every single part covered in that gray. But now we're going to coat it in a light brown wash. Now I know a brown wash is something weird. Just take your black wash that we've made before and go ahead and put a little bit of extra brown paint into it. And I want this to kind of look like dirt in between the roads. So that's what we're doing there. Then we're going to take a brown and do some dry brushing over the top and hit the edges. We don't want this to be extensive uh, because we're actually going to coat this again with something else. So take some brown and then take that same brush and do some lighter gray dry brushing. It doesn't have to dry ahead of time. It's actually good if it mixes. It makes the stone look even more natural. We're doing a second wash now. So now we're doing the black wash, which will really start to show the shadows and the kind of creases and in the depths of all of the tile. The brown was really just to make it look a lot more stone and dirty than normal. Now we're doing the black wash and that will kind of give it the full actual shadowy detail that we're looking for. The final step is to hit it with a pure white highlight dry brushing. Uh, this will actually be the last step if you just wanted to leave these as a road with brick ruins. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and move on to the final step, which is adding the coarse grass to make this look like it's an overgrown road that's been there for quite a while. So to do that, we're going to take just some regular PVA Elmer's style glue and put a few drops on there. I like to thin it out with a coffee stick so that it's not quite as thick. I don't want the mini is kind of crooked as they're sitting on something a little too tall and thinning it out you know just makes it last a little longer too so uh, go ahead and thin your glue out and then take some coarse turf and just completely coat the top it's all reusable so whatever doesn't stick is going to come right back off and go right back in the bottle so completely coat the thing tap it off and bam you've got yourself a completed tile you don't even have to wait for that to dry at least for the stuff to stick i would definitely wait for it to dry before you use it uh but you've got yourself a completed tile and as you can see i like the course setup for this i didn't want to leave it as just the plain brick tile I might have had I done the with the pencil style so that the brick looked a little better but it really was secondary I wanted the highlights of this to be the coarse grass portion of the road itself you can use fine turf and that will look just as good I like to use the coarse turf I just think it kind of fits with the style that I'm going for a little bit better um, and I make sure to hit the sides of those as well it's not thick enough to mess up your kind of modular style setup and then you can take the excess that's just on there pick it up with your fingers and throw it right on I do that to kind of completely coat all of them one of them I make almost look like a kind of hint at a druid circle or something to be used later. But really, that's it. You've got your completed modular system. Because I use one continuous style of turf with most of my terrains, it fits in really, really well. And it especially fits in with the overgrown house video that I've done before. Now this idea to do this tile system actually came from the comments of a Redditor on my previous tower video. So thanks for commenting. Comment down below on any builds you might want to see in the future. And thank you for watching my video. I do appreciate it. Consider subscribing if you liked it and want to watch more. We've got you cornered now, demon. After 12 long years hunting. Now tell me, where are my brothers? I cast move Earth. Every time I'll get you, demon!